What's up guys, Josh from EverydayFBA.com here, and yesterday, Scout IQ pushed down a huge update, a long overdue and much appreciated update down to their book sourcing app. Thank you Caleb Roth and the team over at Scout IQ for getting this and putting this out for us. It really is going to be a game changer, I believe. But with anything new, any kind of changes, people go through a mix of emotions. There's a little bit of fear, there's a little bit of doubt, there's a little bit of excitement, there's overall a resistance to change. So in order to make this a little bit easier for you guys to work with, we're gonna go over Scout IQ updates. More specifically, we're gonna look at the triggers and how to start putting your triggers into Scout IQ on the new cloud-based system. So if you did not heed the emails warning, if you did not jot down all your triggers, your triggers have now disappeared. Watch this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to get them set up relatively fast so that you can go out there, start scanning, sourcing, and finding those profits. All right guys, so we're inside Scout IQ. Go to Scout IQ and log into your account. You're gonna be taken to this screen right here. From here, we're gonna go over to the trigger settings. Now this section will already come with the Scout IQ default triggers right here. We can look at those in just a minute. You can see that I've already added one under this general column heading. But let's take a quick look over at the Scout IQ defaults. So here they are. These are exactly, almost exactly the same as they were in the app. I know that Caleb Roth did make a few tweaks, I think with the target profit and some of these uh, automatic accepts or rejects. So you don't have to really do anything there. If you're going to use the automatic, the default triggers, everything's good to go here. You can't sit here and edit any of this. So don't really try, but this will always be an option inside the app, Scout IQ default triggers. And these triggers are pretty solid. Like if you're gonna go out and you're gonna start sourcing, these triggers are pretty damn solid. You're gonna find quite a bit books this way. However, I like to set my triggers up just a little bit differently. I like to tweak these just a little bit. And we'll take a look at that right now as we go through the process of creating a whole new set of triggers. So again, from the triggers tab, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put new trigger set. We'll go ahead and click on that. This is gonna open up and you have the option here to give it a description I'm just gonna put test as mine now if you're gonna set up many many different kinds of triggers you want to be sure and put as much into the description as you like so that you can identify them inside the app you'll see that once they go inside the app inside your phone they're gonna have the headings so if you guys can see this I don't know if you can right there you can kind of see how it says the different trigger settings that I have so if you were to have like 10, 15, 20 different kinds of trigger settings for whatever reason, you would need a way to be able to identify them because these are not clickable. You can't click on them and then look at what the triggers are on your phone. Something very important that you need to remember. So whatever you're gonna put in that description, make sure that it's something that is easily identifiable. So just for example right here, I put rank is less than one million, profit is greater than five. That's gonna be reflected right here inside the app. If you can see that, not sure if you can. But whatever you put in that description box is going to be reflected on the app. So be sure that you're as descriptive as you need to be for me. Like it's not a big deal. I'm just going to put test because it's just a test. We're going to go over through this and see what it does. I'll hit save trigger setting. Uh, you can also set your buy cost here. Like my average is 250. Uh, if you're not doing average buy cost, go ahead and make multiple triggers for multiple buy costs. So if you're in the thrifts, for example, and books are a dollar, or if you're at library sales and books are 25 cents each, you might want to change those up as you do. I use average buy costs quite simply because it makes everything easier. So knowing your average buy cost is very important, and I suggest you guys find out what yours is. So buy cost here, cost per pound. I'm going to go ahead and put 40 cents. I put 40 cents on mine because I think it's a good middle ground. 25 cents is a little bit low. Sometimes I'm able to get low shipping, even as low as 19 cents a pound, but sometimes it is actually 45 cents a pound. So 40 cents I think is a good even ground. And honestly, 15 cents more or less is not going to make or break a profit if you're looking for the right amount of profit in your books. So again, we'll save that trigger setting and it'll unlock this little bit down here where we can start creating triggers. Now here is the frustrating part if you don't do this correctly. If you just hit create new trigger, it's gonna open up this first line and you're gonna have to go through here and edit every single section. So minimum e-score, max e-score, minimum rank, max rank and so on and so forth. And you can see that if you're not really savvy about what rank is good to go with or what rank is good for a minimum or what e-score is good for a max, then this is gonna cause you a little bit of trouble and a little bit of frustration. So this is what you should do first. Instead of doing that, go through here. Let me delete this real quick. Instead of doing that, creating new triggers one by one line, put restore to defaults. 
You're going to say yes, and what this is going to do, it's going to import all of those default triggers from SkyDIQ, and it's going to put them into your new trigger list. This is going to be a huge time saver and give you a good baseline of what to go by. So now we'll click on test again, and you can see it automatically puts in all that Scout IQ default trigger settings into your new trigger. Now you can go through here and tweak as needed. If you don't want trigger number 12 in here, you can just delete it. You don't want to look at, you know, 10 million ranks, delete it. 6 million ranks, delete it. You can go ahead and delete that stuff right off the bat. You don't even have to worry about it. You can go through here and tweak the FBA slot to 1. You can look at the use slot to 10. You know, you can go through here and tweak it how you want it. It just makes it a little bit more easier to go through here and program your trigger settings without having to start from absolute zero, which struck me as super odd and frustrating the first time that I saw that before I found that little restore to defaults button. So that is the biggest pro tip. Probably the biggest thing you're going to learn out of this video is to hit that button when you start making new triggers and adjust from there. Don't just start from scratch. So for all you guys that have taken advantage of a better book selling course, I am going to input a new add on section into the course uh, going over triggers and how to set these up. And I'll give you my actual settings that I am currently using. And you can go ahead and program those into your Scout IQ account if you want to. The other thing that I'm really excited about, super, super excited about, is the fact that you can now set triggers for DVDs, for music, and for video games. Man, I'm super hyped up about that. Uh, I've been kind of like low-key using FBA scan for CD, DVDs, and I wasn't proud of myself because I love Scout IQ. I love, you know, the app itself. I love how easy and intuitive it is. You know, I was using FBA scan prior to Scout IQ and wasn't really doing well. When I got Scout IQ, you know, it's when things really started to click in my mind of how to find profitable books and analyze the data. I'm super happy that I can now go ahead and dump FBA scan officially, completely, and count on Scout IQ for my DVD, my music, and my video game needs. All right, guys, so the last thing that I'll leave you with to think about is this FBA slot section. Now, in the default triggers, uh, Scout IQ is looking at 4, 4, 3, 3, 2, and then, of course, it starts to skip it as those ranks go higher. The profit coming off it is looking for 2 bucks. So this, in my opinion, may be just a little bit low to be looking for $2 profits in the fourth FBA offer. The reason being is when I look at books that I'm out there scanning, what I want to see is what that profit will be if I price it at the lowest FBA offer, not the fourth or the third or the second. Even if it's a really fast selling book, I still like to see what that profit is on that first FBA offer so that I know what would I make if I sold it today, not, you know, three or four offers down the line. The other issue that I do have with looking at the fourth offer and especially with a $2 target profit is that by the time your book actually sells, you know, a lot of things can happen. So say you're pricing as the fourth offer, you know, more competition comes on, it's lower priced, you have to start competing, you have to start repricing, eventually you're going to lower your price to get that sale. So what does your profit look like at that point? If the fourth FBA offer was $12.99 and you now have to price $9.99, was it worth really buying that book, listing, conditioning, shipping, and waiting for it to sell? So just something to think about, guys. You know, the fourth offer on really low ranked fast selling books is not a bad place to price and me personally i do price higher especially if it's a fast moving book you don't have to be the lowest overall fba offer but for scouting purposes and to make sure that i'm spending my buy money in a smart way i like to compare my profit to the lowest fba offer overall all right, guys, I'm wrapping up with this video right here. If you have any questions about Scout IQ or the new updates that have come down yesterday, go ahead and put them in the comments. If you don't have Scout IQ, there's a link in the description for you to check out. Get that 14 day trial. A lot of people don't know that you can use Scout IQ to scan and source anything. It's not just for books, DVDs, CDs, video games. It's not just for media items. You can look up any product with Scout IQ and make a buying decision with Scout IQ. So hit the description, check out that link, get your 14 day trial and see why I love Scout IQ. My name is Josh, everydayfba.com is the website and I'll see you guys on the next one.